So I wanted to go over the reasons why people switch to Linux and then might go back to Windows. So this is kind of one of those things that it happens quite often because uh, the person didn't realize one of these five things. And there's reasons why I still use Windows today here at the house. So uh, I'm going to go for the top five. So there's five that really matter. And number five is going to be hardware support. There's certain pieces of kind of specialized hardware that Linux just doesn't do uh, at all or have any support for. It's not Linux's fault. A lot of times it's the hardware manufacturing just not wanting to support Linux. A good example of this is my Elgato Stream Deck. It's really nice when I'm streaming to be able to just press a button, switch scenes, do a lot of uh, really cool stuff with that that I'm just not able to do uh, in Linux because I can't use that piece of hardware. Uh, there's other examples of this. Some newer laptops have certain Wi-Fi drivers and things like that that they absolutely have to have, but they just don't have support for it yet. Typically, this is remedied, especially when it comes to Wi-Fi drivers, in the future. A lot of times you come back in a couple months and there's an update to the Linux kernel and that just goes ahead and fixes that issue. That brings us to point four. Point four is pretty much, hey, there's just too many options. When you go to look at all the distributions, in Windows, you just have Windows. In, in Linux, you have uh, all the different types of distributions, which is like how programs are installed. All the package managers change from one distribution to the next. And then on top of that, you have desktop environments, how the look and feel of Linux is, how the file manager is. All these are tons and tons of options, and it's overwhelming for a new user. So that's why so many people like go, oh, okay, well, I don't like this version. They try one or two others, and then they're just like, okay, I'm done with this. I just want to go back to Windows where it's nice and familiar, and I know what to do. But in Linux, there's just a lot more to learn, a lot more to customize and change, and this causes some problems. And then we have the third reason. Really, this is games. So I always say Linux is great with games, and I love Linux and play my personal games on Linux. However, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know about like ProtonDB.com. Uh, this just shows you, hey, these are all the compatible games on Steam that are capable of running on Linux. And then you have Lutris, Lutris.net, I, I believe it is, and, and that is more of your non-Steam games and their compatibilities. So there's still certain games that I play that I need to boot into Windows for. Those games are Fortnite, PUBG, and then also my Oculus VR. All my Oculus VR games aren't compatible in Linux uh, because you need to be running them in Steam, and some of them are actually sitting on Oculus's platform. Thanks, Facebook. And then this goes right into point number two, missing software. So you have the missing games, but there's certain software that just isn't on Linux. And I'm not going to cover all of these, but the two major ones that people always get stuck on are the Adobe Creative Suite. That's Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Premiere. All of those are issues. And then you also have uh, certain other things such as Microsoft Office. You can use older versions of some of these products in like a compatibility layer like Wine, but in the end, they just don't work very well in Linux. And if you're a big advocate and you have to use Adobe or Microsoft Office, you're better off in Windows. And then comes the last point, lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge is a big issue when it comes to these types of things because so much of Linux, there's so much to learn. With Windows, I've spent probably 20 years of my career learning all the ins and outs of Windows. And by comparison, Windows is pretty basic as far as how its uh, basic look and feel and how an average user would use it. Linux, like I said, kind of going back to the original point, there's a lot of options. And to learn each one of those options, it takes a lot of time. And some people just want to use their computer and use the knowledge they've already gained on Windows and not want to learn a new operating system. Because fundamentally, Linux works a lot differently than Windows. It's much more secure, but that security and reliability comes with the cost of having to learn a new operating system. You can't make Linux work like Windows because you just can't. <laughs> that is not possible. Windows installs programs differently. It runs programs differently. Everything about Windows is different from Linux. And that's a good thing because Windows fundamentally is flawed. And I've done a whole video 
telling you of the three major flaws about Windows and how their kernel, the base of Windows, the foundation of Windows, hasn't really changed since the late 90s, where Linux just continues to evolve and get better. And really, those are the five reasons that people don't stay on Linux when they switch over. So uh, with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I'm curious to see what other things might I have missed that brought you back to Windows from Linux. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't do videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.